Hey, everybody, this is Stephen Jeffries from Fright Night, and you're listening to Without Your Head. All right. Welcome back to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Marlon Taylor, who played the young Mike Hanlon in Stephen King's It the miniseries. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How you doing, Mr. Nasty Neal? <laughs> I'm doing great. It's awesome to have you here. No, thank you, thank you. It's, it's awesome to be here. Yeah, and so the 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 remake comes out tomorrow. Uh, have you seen the remake yet? And if not, are you uh, planning to see it? Uh, I'm definitely planning to see the remake. Um, so far, I've been trying to keep my uh, my nose clean, my ears clean, and my mm-hmm. eyes clean. I've I've tried not to really uh, see too much information about it, uh, and I'm not going tomorrow to see it. I'm actually going Friday night uh, yeah. on, at the late. Latest show, last show, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just want to be surprised. I want to see what this director did in order to kind of change things uh, from what we did, especially since it's going to be on a movie screen. So I am so interested to see. Yeah, me too. And uh, I'm the same way. I like to stay away from any uh, spoilers. Even like, don't want to read any like reviews because they might give something away. No, oh, no, I haven't read any reviews. And anytime anybody really starts uh, talking about seeing any parts of it, I kind of try and turn everything off yeah so so how did you get your role in uh, in the original one in, in the miniseries uh well i'd moved to california from new york and uh my dad kind of got me into acting at a young age um wow i had to audition for that role probably <laughs> about uh five or six times uh-huh. um but i was about a uh, I was 15 playing a 12 year old so i mean that was awesome mm-hmm. and uh what were yeah, those we, auditions? Well, I was going to say, what were those auditions like? Um, you know, the first couple of auditions, I, I felt like I kind of had a, you know, knocked it out the park and kind of had the role. But as, as you keep kind of auditioning and auditioning, you, you're kind of like, uh, okay, there's somebody else out there that's uh-huh. kind of, you know, in line with me to get this thing. So <clears throat> it was a little strenuous as it went on. But once I found out I had it, I was super excited. Yeah. Did did anyone ever tell you what what they saw in you that made that made you right for the role? Uh, you know, I never I, n- I never really got that directly, especially not for that role. Mm-hmm. Um, but interestingly enough, I mean, uh, you know, I just kind of got back into acting this year, okay. and uh, my my next role was a uh, <laughs> Z Nation, so I got to play a zombie. I went from killer clowns to killer zombies. <laughs> I mean, you get to bring it full circle, right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, though. Uh, let's talk about that for a bit. We'll get back to it. But uh, so what made you decide to get back into acting? Um, well, it was something I truly, really enjoy. I mean, you know, I love to work, but I also enjoy having fun. And that's something that I really enjoy doing. And just, you know, working regular jobs and all that, I wasn't doing it for me. Mm-hmm. And I had my wife also putting her foot in my butt and uh just trying to get me back to that as well. And, you know, I finally gave in, I, I gave in this year and, you know, just kind of jumped back into it full swing and, uh, you know, I'm excited. So, yeah. Does, does it help you at all that you were in, uh, it because I would think a lot of directors today, you know, grew up watching it and, you know, in a way it's kind of cool to have someone, you know, connected to a iconic horror movie. Uh, well, you know, it's funny that you asked that. I've been <laughs> kind of hoping right. uh, to use that as a crutch. But, uh-huh. um, you know, um, like I said, it's been whew, over a little bit over 20 years mm-hmm. since I've been in the game. So, I mean, you know, my name isn't one of those names that's anywhere near the top towards really anything that anybody's doing. So it's, you know, it's just back to me to have to get to grind from the bottom and uh, just kind of get back out there myself. Uh, mm-hmm. This is helping. Sure. And so I, once again, I really appreciate being able to be on your show today. Um, yeah, you know, awesome. and, uh, I've got a horror convention oh, you do? <laughs> that Sweet. I'll be doing, uh, next month out in, uh, San Jose. So I'm excited about that as well. Nice. I was going to ask about that because, um, uh, I do a lot of conventions and have done the, the hosted panels and stuff. And I don't, I don't really remember seeing any of the, uh, the cast members of it besides of course, uh, uh, Pennywise at, uh, at any conventions. So I first. think, uh, Tim Curry was more of a more popular actor. A lot of us younger, uh, cast were kind of, uh, either up and coming and mm-hmm. 
Um, some of us didn't uh, continue uh, following in that tradition afterwards. And so it's kind of just one of those things where it's, uh, where are they now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of people really interested. The timing is, is, is great, obviously, with the new one coming out. It'll bring attention to the old one, and a lot of people love it anyway. So, uh, and usually someone, you know, new to the convention scene, uh, people want like, you know, it's stuff signed that they don't have signed by from a lot of people. Right. Right. Um, and that, and that's kind of what I'm looking forward to as well, especially next month. You know, this is kind of going to be my first convention. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not, I don't necessarily believe it's a con. Um, it's the famous monsters Halloween convention okay. Yeah. down in San Jose. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's my first time out. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about it. I'll see how many it fans there are out there. Um, I believe once I, uh, look at the stuff this weekend. I'll kind of see how this uh, weekend goes with, with, with the film and everything, how it did in the box office. And, you know, I mean, I, I've been seeing nothing but stuff blowing up kind of on yeah. the internet. I've seen some articles in a couple of magazines, so I'm excited. It's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, I'm looking forward to it and no, it's really cool that you're going to be at the, uh, I might know some people involved in that convention. I'm not positive, but that's really cool that you're doing that. I think you'll have a good time too. Have okay, right. Yeah. Now, you know, you'll be meeting the fans there of the movie. Have you over the years met many? Do people recognize you from it? Um, you know, kind of both. I've had uh I've had people recognize me. I've had people kind of once they hear my name, they might associate it with it. Um and then a lot of times if it comes up in conversation that it's me, they say no. And then they look at me <laughs> next to a picture and then they're like, okay, okay, that was you. Um, so, you know, uh, I think more so now, I mean, most of the people that I work with, yeah. I kind of know I've done that. And those are kind of all the people I'm going out with this weekend to kind of see it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So, um, when you had, when you had the, when you were auditioning, did you, had you read it before? Were you familiar with the book? Um, I wasn't necessarily familiar with the book. I didn't actually get to reading the book until after I got the part. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the book, the book is great. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in the book that I wish they could have put in the, um, in the miniseries, mm -hmm. which didn't wind up in the miniseries. And so that's kind of why I'm so gassed on seeing the movie, mm -hmm. um, especially because it's a different adaptation. Um, I think this director kind of looked at the film differently. He didn't have to worry about trying to fit everything into uh, such a small time slot. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, he didn't have to worry about uh, not being able to pull any punches and, you know, just kind of go for go for the gusto on this mm -hmm. one. So I'm really excited about seeing, seeing what Mr. Machete uh, is about to put out there. Yeah. Uh, the original script for the miniseries – was there anything that they didn't film that was in the script? Uh, no, pretty much everything that we filmed was in there. Um, you know, I kind of wish that there was a little bit more of uh, more flashbacks in the second portion of the film, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of explain some more things. But uh, like I said, I understood the time constraints, or at least I understand those time constraints now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah yeah did did uh like the group of you guys the, the group of the kids at the time who played the losers club uh did you actually bond together like uh you know having this role together oh yeah you know what interestingly enough half of us were from um la and the other half were actually from uh vancouver mm -hmm. uh so i mean and then it, it was a little clickish i mean you know there were certain people who bonded more with other people we all kind of hung out you know, a lot of, while we were at the hotel, um, that we were staying at while filming and stuff, lots of pool parties and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, once we got back to LA, uh, some of us kind of continued to talk. I've been, uh, speaking with Brandon recently. Mm -hmm. I haven't, uh, really talked to Seth since way back then. And then, uh, you know, a lot of the folks up there in Canada, I haven't really had any contact with since, uh, since back then, I think. Yeah. Seth might've been the only one out of all of us that kind of really, uh, 
continued on with his career and kind of kept that going for himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's uh, really become a, you know, a pretty big star. Especially the robot chicken. Mm -hmm. Robot chicken. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Uh, I I think, uh, I think the girl, Emily uh, did a lot of stuff after, but from what I understand, she's left the business uh, recently. Uh, Yeah. I heard she's done a few cons since then. And, um, and done a little bit of stuff out there as well. Um, I've pretty much been doing just the family thing, raising my two little ones and yeah. living out here in Seattle, living in Seattle. It makes it a little bit hard to kind of do work. Oh. It's not a whole lot of business out this yeah. way. I was in Seattle a few years ago for a convention, actually a horror movie convention that was out in Seattle. They should have brought really? you in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably didn't know I was here. I was probably <laughs> undercover at that point. <laughs> right. Um, uh, so Brandon will actually be on next week. Um, and so you started, he told me to say hello to you. And, uh, so you started talking to him again. Um, like how did that come about? Um, I think it happened probably, uh, probably towards the closer towards the beginning of the year. Um, you know, I kind of got on Twitter and, uh, kind of started posting some pictures uh, that my dad had sent me from back when we were down there shooting the film and uh, just behind the scenes stuff that I had. And uh, he kind of chimed in on a few photos and uh, we've kind of just chatted a little, a little bit here and there uh, for the past few months and stuff. Uh, so, you know, I'd actually kind of like to get back in touch with him as well. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I, I wanted to see the film with him, but uh-huh. you know we're just we're, we're I guess two states away from each other, mm-hmm. so it just didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a uh, of course there's some racism uh, in in the in the in the miniseries with your character. Uh, how do you think that was uh, dealt with? Do you think that it was uh, well done? Um, I, I mean I think they they did it in in a form where it wasn't a. It was it wasn't over the top. Uh, it got to the point. I mean, that's kind of how it was back then. You know, it's kind of still like that a little bit sometimes now. You know, so I mean, it'll be interesting to see how they put that in the new one as well, or if that's kind of something that's kind of not necessarily um, a main topic. I think this might be more of a of a horror thing, mm-hmm. but we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I haven't seen a whole lot of um. Like even in the trailers and stuff, I haven't really seen a whole lot of a uh, young Mike. So we'll, we'll see how they how they uh, put him and portray him in this uh, in the second film. I look mm-hmm. forward to seeing seeing it as well. So I yeah. can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's finally excited. here. Uh-huh. So um, you know, speaking of the, the other cast members, um, when you heard John is, uh, Jonathan Brandis. Uh, passed away uh were you uh, in contact with him at all since the movie um i hadn't really been in contact with him i and you know thinking back i guess he actually did continue his career on as well after that he still had a few films yeah. after that um but it was sad to hear um and you know sadly enough like in the business there's like i guess too much of that at a young age where people kind of pass on mm-hmm. um Rest in peace, Jonathan, Jonathan Brandis. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, we we weren't really in in touch a whole lot at that point. Um, and I think uh, you know once I kind of got back to LA, at that point I was 15. I kind of did a few more things, and I moved away to Florida to go to college for a few years. Uh, and when I came back, I didn't really have a manager. Um, and kind of getting back into the business just it seemed like a little bit of a struggle. And so at that point, I just kind of went to just doing regular jobs and just kind of, you know, just living life and just kind of, to me, I guess now looking back at it, it's getting experience, you know, it's something to draw from, you know, for any future characters that I, that I may have. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of neat. Uh, now that the new one comes out, you'd be like, the 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 age of of Mike as the adult exactly and I am <laughs> <laughs> I that that's been a that that's been on my helmet that's been on my head um, you know I'd love to have the opportunity um, 
to bring it full circle yeah. that way and, and even play myself as an adult since mm-hmm. it's, it, it should be about almost between 25 and 30 years later. Yeah. So, you know, um, That's I believe wild. they are, you know, they're working on, uh, they're working on part two. And mm-hmm. I think that it's kind of just in post-production right now and that they might be looking, uh, to, you know, start in production maybe next year or sometime early next year, 2018. So, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully that can be uh that can be on my chart and on my agent chart and we, yeah. we can get out there and see about making that happen i mm-hmm. think that would be great i think it, i think it would be awesome uh well obviously for you but i think it'd be awesome for the movie too if uh you know you have the connection to the original movie and uh i think like you know hardcore horror fans would uh that'd be like a little added uh intrigue you know hey this is you know cool that the, the guy comes back to, to play himself as an adult I think that also adds a di- uh, different type of intrigue and, yeah. uh, and a little extra to it as well. Um, and even those other cast members that might still be around, being sure. able to maybe even, you know, come back. If you could bring the whole, well, I know you can't bring the whole Lucky yeah. Seven back, but if you could at least bring the yeah, Lucky Six or, yeah. you know, some type of rendition, it would be awesome. Cameos, whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be sweet. Uh, get some questions here for on the Facebook. A lot of questions. Uh, Jay Gernado, Gernado, I'm not sorry to say your last name. Sorry, Jay. Uh, did Tim Carey scare you? Um, Tim, you Carey. know, sorry. He was actually he was actually a great person to work with. Uh, uh-huh. Very funny guy. Um, I don't know. There's a there's a photo that I actually uh, I put out on my Twitter uh, Twitter page that had uh, all seven of us. Uh, sitting with him dressed as Pennywise in his chair while he was reading the Mad Magazine <laughs> with a smile on his face. And, I mean, that's kind of the guy he was. Um, he, he wasn't a scary person to work with. You know, we kind of had to pretend like we were scared. The costume did add a little bit of a, a little bit of extra to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, more than anything, I, I like, he made us laugh. <laughs> uh, well- was he fine with you guys seeing him out of character? I know sometimes on movies, when I've talked to people, like uh, they want to stay in in makeup, you know, around the other cast members. Um, no, I think he he was pretty much fine being out of character mm-hmm. uh, with us. Um, I think you can probably talk to anybody who's worked with him, and they'll tell you he's a great person to work with, and that he's fun to work with. Yeah. Uh, what about the fear of clowns? Do you have a fear of clowns and? Uh, did you know that there was like a fear of clowns before it came out? Um, I knew that there was a fear of clowns just more so due to little young kids just because of all the makeup. Mm-hmm. I didn't have one. Um, one of my favorite movies is actually Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> Excellent. Um, oh, yeah, that's a great movie. Uh-huh. Um, and so, like, for me, I guess after doing the film, it kind of surprised me how many people are afraid of clowns because of that film. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's really interesting to me. Uh, But no, I don't don't mind clowns. My kids haven't been able to watch the movie yet, though. Uh They can do zombies, (laughs) but they haven't been able to to watch it yet. So we're still working on that. All right. It seems like uh, the last few years, even before the new it, uh, clowns have really like made like a, a comeback. It's like you've there's a lot of clown movies, Twisty the Clown, American Horror Story. And... Mm-hmm. I think uh, you know even the clowns that have been in just like the regular news popping yeah, up in London and true. on the East Coast. Um, I think uh, I think all of that is kind of preemptive. You know, I believe you know in Hollywood, everybody kind of has a little uh, notion of what's going on and what's coming out when and where. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I, I think the, uh, even more so the folks that have just kind of been out there, um, freaking people out in clown costumes and putting red balloons out for over the last year and a half or two, Uh have kind of probably been doing a little bit more promotion than some other folks. (laughs) Uh I've seen that actually lately. There's people that go in and tying, um, like red balloons, uh, to like, uh, to grates and stuff. Right, just I don't know if it's just mm-hmm. people or what. But. 
No, no, no. I guess uh, I guess there was something that just happened over in Pennsylvania where the police department kind of had fun with it as well and told folks that they were terrified when they saw that. And please don't put those red balloons on the grates anymore. <laughs> so, you know, I, everybody's having fun with it. I'm uh, seeing T-shirts kind of all over the place. And I think I saw a T-shirt for uh, for the old it mm-hmm. off in off in a store or something like that. Yeah, I so, think actually I mean, Walmart has a uh, has an original Pennywise shirt, which is it's kind of weird. Aren't to you gonna about. say hello? That's yes. what it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Andy mm-hmm. Frassard wants to know: uh, Was the Henry Bowers character difficult to interact with? Um, you know. Uh, when 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 you're acting and you're out there, I mean, doing the scene, it was difficult to interact with him just because of the type of uh, stuff that we were dealing with for those uh, two characters. Um, but the actor himself was also, you know, a great person to work with. Um, there there was no no ill favor towards either one, you know, mm-hmm. off screen. Yeah. But on screen, yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, being chased by like four or five folks, man, and having to climb over a fence, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not easy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So so you did your own stunts, I I, I take it. I did. And Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was funny because I I did a few cuts on the part where we come over the hill and I kind of had to, where I ran over the hill before they got there as I was getting into the valley with where the Lucky Seven were and Mm -hmm. You know, the first shot, I came over and just kind of ran, and he was like, okay, okay, that was good. Okay, we're going to try it again. I want you to be a little bit more dramatic and look like you're really, really trying to get away. And I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So we do it again, and I'm coming up over the hill, and I kind of, you know, slide a little bit and bounce up, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And, you know, he's like, okay, cool, cool. That was good. That was good. Let's do it one more time, and I need you to really – so the – the third time I come and, you know, I run and kind of throw myself over the hill and like roll all the way down the hill uh-huh. and then kind of get up at the bottom and run over to them guys. And I'm like, help, help, help. And he's like, great, 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 great. Now it was awesome when I saw the movie though. And I saw them use the shot where I just kind of ran straight up over the top of the hill and down. And I was like, man, that was the first shot. <laughs> you, had, you had me break my butt, bust my head, do all this extra stuff. And you didn't even use any of those. So, uh, 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 Byron wants to know Byron Henderson. Uh, since you said you read the book, uh, was there anything in Mike's story in the book that you wish had played out in the miniseries? Um, not necessarily anything more about him. I just wished he was more so around. I wish they would have had a little bit more, um, about his story in general in there. Uh, I think one of the things that I notice whenever people talk about the film is they never really talk about that character. I think, um, his character is kind of one of the base characters, especially with having the information that kind of, uh, mm-hmm. It's Pennywise and his tendencies throughout the decades and the years having the photo album mm-hmm. um, and all of that. And then even just kind of staying in Derry and bringing everybody back. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, like I said, they're doing a, they're doing a part two. So hopefully in the film portion, they'll, they'll elaborate on that. You know, mm-hmm. we'll see. Uh, but I wish they would have done a little bit more with that during the miniseries. But like I said, I understand it's one of those things mm-hmm. where you have a time constraint. Um, because he really is one of the most important characters, like you said, because he's the guy who stays there and he's the guy that brings everybody back. He's kind of like the linchpin of the group to uh to have them all, you know, return. W- without him, that, that you know, that they would have went on and forgot about Pennywise. Mm-hmm, which some some of the characters kind of wanted to do as adults. Mm-hmm. Um. And that'll also be interesting to see how 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 Stanley happens to uh, uh, take care of himself in part two. But you know, it, it, it's part one right now. Uh, this is just the young folks. It'll be awesome to see how they expanded um, on what they did for the miniseries. Now for the film, um, I'm looking forward to seeing a whole bunch more blood and a whole bunch more gore. Uh-huh. And uh, 
I'll be at a center bar where I'll be able to have some drinks and some food. Hopefully, <laughs> uh-huh. I won't Sounds be spilling good. anything on anybody. But hey, <laughs> I look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> so don't sit close to me. All right, fair enough. For uh, when, any of the stuff like in the sewers, where where were you guys actually filming? Uh, the sewers were actually in a warehouse um, when we were actually down in the sewer. That was actually a set that they had built. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, uh, when he came through the deadlights came through the tunnel and we all kind of fell down into, into the water as it came over us, mm-hmm. you know, they had a camera on like a, a little, a little, uh, kind of a little shuttle system, which took that across. But the, uh, part where we climbed into the tunnel, mm-hmm. uh, that was actually at like an abandoned factory out there in like the sticks in like North BC up there Pat in Vancouver somewhere. And then, uh, the portion where we were out front, uh, by the little lake, uh, when we, uh, actually, I guess, uh, we're all passing the asthma inhaler around before we went inside happened to be, um, at a, uh, a water treatment factory out there as well. So, you know, I like kind of hanging out those, those type of places. And it was really cool being in those areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Doobie wants to know, uh, was the infamous sex scene from the book ever discussed at all? Oh, never. <laughs> I, I didn't think so. <laughs> No, never. Uh, it would have been a good thing to have been discussed, but I know yeah, they never discussed that. You yeah. got to think this is this is back in the nineties, <laughs> early nineties, just uh, out the eighties. They were, they were still a little fresh to that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we uh, weren't even cursing on TV back then. Uh huh. That that would have been quite the miniseries if that would have been in it, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of maybe would have been on that. Thorn birds type trail, you know, he <laughs> might have been able to get it back out every so often. Old folks would have been into it, and, you know. Uh, Nick uh, Tyson, uh, we already brought this up, but uh, he he actually uh, reiterates what you you mentioned. He says, uh, if given the opportunity, he'd like you to see you reprise a role as Mike. So he had the same idea, so that was cool. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, man. I, we could get more folks out there, man. Maybe the director will be like, I need this guy to come into my office. I'm tired of hearing about it from people. <laughs> I agree. I like that. I want to get it trending on the, on the Twitter. Um, Mark Allen Gunnels, did the did you have any interaction with the adult uh, actors? Um, yes, I did. I actually, we asked, or all of us actually got to meet them, um, especially towards the end. Uh, filming when we had kind of our big uh, cast finale. Um, if you've ever seen Sister Sister, um, which Tim Reed, who was who I played as a young person, was in with the two twins uh, early in the nineties, I actually wound up doing one of the episodes on uh, that show as well. So then I got to work with uh, Tim Reed as well on another show, which was kind of cool. Yeah. And he definitely remembered me from it. So that was awesome as well, too. Nice. That's very cool. Um, Robbie Scar wants to know, uh, did you have any interaction with Stephen King? Uh, he actually was not really allowed to be around on uh, that set for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, he wasn't really around for, uh, uh-huh. for the filming of that. I actually wish I really, um, would have had a chance to meet him. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, you know, I've actually started following uh, him a little bit on Twitter and that's actually kind of been an awesome experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm close to Maine, so I can maybe I'll go up and uh, visit him. I don't think that would work well, but uh, I I saw he's really big on on the new one though. He liked it. Is that is that where you're at? You're up in uh you're up in the Maine area. I'm in Massachusetts, so I'm close to Maine. Okay, you're a Patriots fan, huh? Yeah, yeah, I grew up Patriots fan here. You kind of have to. This will kick you out. Okay, okay. no worries. Mm-hmm. No Raiders. Go Raiders! No, 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 no ill favor. <laughs> are, are they going to move oh, yeah. to uh, Las Vegas? 
Uh, so the story goes, and I'm not really excited about that. You don't, you don't take football teams and lots of men pumped up and horny and put them in Sin City <laughs> where they can just drink and have women and do stupid shit. They're already doing stupid shit without right. being there. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> And I hate for my team to be the one that goes there. They should have sent the Dallas Cowboys there. Jerry Jones was like the main guy that's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Send them there. Send them there. <laughs> send your team there. <laughs> let, let Zeke and them go there, man. Yeah, there's a lot of temptation in in, in, in Las Vegas. Lots of tempta- legal temptation. <laughs> right, right. Uh, what was the director, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace, like? Uh, Tommy Lee Wallace was actually a great guy to work with as well. He knew what he wanted, um, and he was really able to verbalize um, what he wanted from us. So that made it really easy to kind of just um, to do our job, to do what we needed to do in order to, you know, create and just paint that picture. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's when you're young, you kind of don't realize what you got going on sometimes until uh, – until time passes, I didn't realize how big of a uh, how big of a a film or how big of a following it would wind up having. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, after that, uh, so that's great too. Yeah. Well, when did you realize it did? Because I know um, you know it's a big miniseries and everything, but without the internet and stuff, um, like. Do you have like interaction with fans and stuff? So when did you realize that it really was this uh, movie with such a following? Um, I think more so once I kind of just kind of got into, I think my twenties. So probably around the early, uh, or late, I should say late nineties, um, early two thousands, just kind of seeing stuff out there and just hearing people talk about it or like whenever anybody found out that I was, young Mike and if they'd be like, Oh my God, that movie and this and this and that. And then, um, like I had heard about the remake, I think probably about in 2000 and maybe 2008, 2009 or something like that. Like I heard about it a long time ago and I really wasn't acting at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, I really wasn't in the game and, um, I didn't uh, know what they were actually trying, like going to do. I didn't know what form they were going to do. Like if they were going to do the kids and adults or like back and forth in the film or anything. And, mm-hmm. you know, I was really trying to get back into it at that point as well. Um, but it didn't work out that way, whatever. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it, it wound up coming out uh, and it's, there's been a little bit of a build up and my name's kind of been popping around here or there. Um, so it's kind of been a good thing. It's been yeah. a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, once you got on online, well, once you got the, the Twitter, when did you get the Twitter? Um, I've had my Twitter account now for probably, uh, almost about, uh, 10 or 11 months, almost a year now. Okay. And what is the Twitter uh, account so people can follow you? Uh, you know, it's funny about that. I'm one of those people who I uh, have it, and I don't even know what it is. But I believe it's at uh, that Marlon Taylor. You just look Marlon Taylor up on there, and I'm right there. Mm-hmm. So when, once you got on there, did you did did you find like a lot of people uh, started interacting with you, or that, and that's that is the thing. I have been having a lot of people that I've been kind of interacting with on there. A lot of people have kind of been giving me uh, their thoughts. Um, about the film and all that as well. Um, and you know, what their feelings were from the original mini series. Uh, yeah, it's, um, here, I'll give it to you guys. The Twitter account is at Mr. I just, I just MT 29. Uh-huh. You see it, Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. I just looked it up myself <laughs> at Marlon Taylor is a totally different person, but, uh, <laughs> is that another guy somebody else is out there uh, but yeah that's right that's very cool um are, are you uh i know they're making a documentary about pennywise uh about it are you involved in that i am involved with that as well if you're talking about the uh documentary that's coming out uh with john you know, Campiano. 
Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, uh, he's been seeing some stuff on Facebook. He's been uh, kind of showing. He just went up to Canada and uh, kind of had some interviews with some folks up there and went out to a lot of the uh, the uh, the sites where we were shooting. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the person that you're talking about? Um, I, I know Mike Perez. Uh, I'm friends with him, and I know he's involved. I'm not sure who else is involved. Okay. But uh, it's probably no the worries. Same. Yeah. It's called Pennywise, the story of it. Is is that it? Um, you know, actually, I'm not even sure of the title. But if that is, um, <laughs> if that's something that's being worked on, and I don't have a part in it, you, you got my info. You need to tell them to holler right, at me. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same one. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, is that cool for you though? It seems like uh, in the last this couple years, like uh, a lot of uh, interest has picked up. Um, that's actually cool for me. You know, I'm one of those people. I watch a lot of cult classics, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so for me to be in a film that gets to be thrown in the cult classic category, I think is awesome. Yeah. Um, and for people to kind of, for young folks, even kind of nowadays to even know, you know, about that film, I enjoy that as well, but especially with it. Um, being so old. Now, the one thing I do get to hear is I, I think a lot of young people um, aren't impressed with the amount of blood and gore mm-hmm. in in the miniseries, and I think people kind of tend to forget about the time frame when it was done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the capabilities of what uh, filming could do and all of that and the time frame and television and, you know. Yeah. yeah it wasn't, so, you know. It's not like now, because, like, you know, when I was growing up, you really never saw blood on TV, but, but now even on regular TV or, or basic cable, I mean, shows are way gorier th- than they ever were when I was a kid. I like walking dead. That's on basic cable, but even shows on, on network TV now are, are very bloody. Like handle well, bloody sex. You get yeah. to see sex on television. You get to hear words on TV that you couldn't <laughs> even say like out loud at home. <laughs> right. right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, it's much different. Much different. Yep. Uh, uh, what did you think of of the finished uh, it when when it came out originally? Um, you know, I actually enjoyed watching it. We got to watch it like a big movie premiere down in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the uh, the only part that turned me off a little bit was just the very very end and just yeah. kind of seeing uh, the spider. Mm-hmm. And so that's also like something I'm really looking forward to seeing. I don't think they're really going to get into it in this film. Yeah. Um, to show you what he really, really looks like, but, um, I'm really excited about um, seeing what he's really going to look like at the very end. Yeah. Yeah. That was always my only problem. Uh, not so much when I watched it again, cause then I knew, you know, what was happening, but, uh, the first time I watched it, that was, you know, kind of a letdown, but, uh, it's just, it's almost hard to film because you know when the, when you're reading the book, you can imagine whatever you want as you know the 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 most uh, fearsome thing to you. But that's kind of a hard thing mm-hmm. to film. You know, it's almost and I, and in I a think, way you wouldn't film. I think that that is one of the biggest things about reading the book versus also seeing it on the screen is the fact that when you're reading the book, you have your own idea of all the images. Um, and I think that's what Stephen King did really well. He was able to, and that was also what each character mm-hmm. had to deal with is whatever was the scariest for them is how it finally presented himself to, you know, the kids, mm-hmm. you know, whatever they were most afraid of is how he presented himself after he came to them as a fun loving. Oh, I know you would enjoy and like, you know, me, let's play some games type deal. Mm-hmm. Uh. <clears throat> yep and uh you know the very i don't know what you would film i know a spider is scary but uh i always thought in a way it would probably be better if you didn't even film what he was but then i know that would be a letdown to some people too but sometimes not you know nothing you can film can uh can be as scary as what is what you can imagine True that, and and I and I completely understand that as well. So, you know, 
I'm looking forward to it. We're, we we got a whole bunch of uh, different uh, things that we can do now with, uh, you know, computer graphics and, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So you uh, are you a horror movie fan? I know you mentioned uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, yeah, I love horror movies. I think uh, the first horror movie I ever uh, saw was uh, Amityville, and my babysitter actually sat me down in front of all of them. (laughs) And I sat in the back room, and I shut up, and I just sat there and watched the films. And ever since then, like, I I, I love horror films. Yeah. Even cheesy B-movie horror films. Like, I love horror flicks. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your some of your favorites, along with uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I love The Lost Boys. The nice. first. Uh, I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The first Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. where Jason wasn't even in the movie. Right. I think it's kind of one of the best ones. Um, let's see. What else, man? Uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh, excellent movie. Um, the best transformation. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Fright Night, what'd you say? I said the best transformation scene ever. Oh, yeah, when he turns into a werewolf. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Fright um, Night's another great any, one. Uh, Fright Night, Hellraiser. Uh, I'm a Michael Myers guy. I can't understand how people can't get it right from a dude who just walks after you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Michael Myers run, but he catches everybody. Uh-huh. <laughs> Freddy Krueger is one of my comedy favorites. Mm-hmm. Like I enjoy watching him just for his his catchphrases and his punchlines. Mm-hmm. Yep. For, uh, all those are uh, Fr- Fright Night's a really good one. I remember uh, I went to see that with uh, my friend at the time. Couldn't see R rated movies, and uh, we went to see it <laughs> and uh, with my older brother. And then I had to explain to uh, his name was Paul. Uh, the, the, um, I think it was the dark crystal. I explained to him the, uh, the, the movie, the dark crystal in case his parents mm-hmm. asked, cause that's what we, we lied to his parents and said we were going to go see the dark crystal. And, uh, so I, <laughs> a so, Jim Henson movie. Huh? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and so in case they asked, I, I told them what happened in the dark crystal. <laughs> 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 and they were like, "Did you?" And he was like, "Yeah, the puppets were great. They were great." <laughs> exactly. But uh, I always think uh, that movie's really ahead of its time, um, *Fright Night*, because I think some people talk about *Scream* being like the first, like, kind of self-referential horror movie where they, you know, they talk about the rules and stuff. But uh, *Fright Night* really does that because uh, everyone knows the rules of, of the vampires within the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you got, uh, and I think, uh, you know, that was uh, Corey Haim back then, right? Corey mm-hmm. Haim and Corey Feldman. Oh, no, he's in uh, Lost Boys, Lost Boys. Not, but, not weren't they in Fright Night too though, as well? Or that was, uh, what's, oh, what's the guy with the black hair? I can't remember his name. And, uh, see, it's one of the, I haven't seen that movie in a long yeah. time, man. But uh, Lost Boys is great though too. That's got Corey. That's got the Corys in it. it was the Frog Brothers and Keith, Keith for Sutherland. Yeah, Keith and, Sutherland. And I guess the main guy who played uh, the older brother. Like I, I mean, uh, what else did he happen to be in? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah that was a great movie as well. I like mm-hmm. vampires. Vampires are cool. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, any uh, modern uh, horror movies that, that you're into? Do you prefer uh, the old? Uh, well, you know, nowadays everything's getting kind of gory. Um, you know, uh, I've been watching a, a lot of the, I guess, the remakes of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and then, I mean, I'm kind of outside of that. I'm kind of like, you know, wh- where, where, where do we go? I mean, people in the hills and stuff like that. I mean, um, you know, uh, hostile. I mean, I don't necessarily know if I consider those horror versus just plain, you know, uh, just straight up, uh, just gore movies. Yeah. Uh, you know, old horror movies, I think, uh, one of the classic things about them was sometimes you didn't even, uh, they were able to not allow you to even see what, everybody was running from and so thus and therefore you actually had a little bit of that uh book you know reading a book and using your own imagination 
mm-hmm. uh, tendency to being able to create uh, the experience of whatever creature everybody was running from. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, right now, I mean, what would you consider like horror movies for, for nowadays for this time frame? Um, a lot of, it seems like a lot of ghost movies, um, are popular, like the conjuring and, um, okay. 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 Movies. I guess. Um, um, but ones that I actually I, I, like, I re- I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but, uh, came up this year's the devil's uh, candy. I really liked, uh, get out. Nope, was haven't really seen good. that one. Yeah. Get out. Yeah, okay. Get out was good. Oh yeah. yeah oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually I did see that. Um, and I think the reason why I like that, and I didn't necessarily consider that a horror movie either, just because of, um, sure. It's I not... guess it was closer to being real to me. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> that, that, uh, shit, that shit can happen. Uh, <laughs> For real. Uh-huh. Like, you know, you can be hypnotized and, you know, people can, yeah, people can look, I'm going to put your inside you going that person you as a person is going to be inside that person over there man didn't they do that with self selflessness or something like that with uh ryan reynolds and um mm. kind of the same concept i believe Might, yeah not not as not as bad though but somebody putting themselves in somebody else and uh-huh but um i enjoyed that film i, yeah, I didn't good. it but was i could see you know, it not that, necessarily uh, a horror movie but um, but yeah, there's a, Hmm. Like I said devil's candy is, is a new movie that, that I really liked a lot of, a lot of the, uh, I'm not really big on, uh, ghost movies, so I don't really like the, okay. the conjuring and stuff, but I know they're popular and people are into them. Uh, to me, it's been interesting to kind of see the, uh, surgeons and zombies where zombies yeah. are just kind of everywhere. Like even in the toy store, they, <laughs> Nerf is doing all the little zombie, like, uh, Nerf guns, and then you've got The Walking Dead and Z Nation, and then even looking on Netflix and stuff, and just looking around at films, there's like I Zombie and Zombie, and mm-hmm. just and everything. Everything's there's a Walking Dead thing now, so yeah, Zombiever. But yeah, it's really Zombie. weird. That... <laughs> <laughs> That's a real movie. There's, but it's really yeah, weird. I, I kind of saw that with the picture of the girl and the beaver head straight up. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is weird because uh you know i grew up watching the zombie movies but they were they weren't mainstream movies like dawn of the dead and stuff but it's weird to see like zombie toys and zombie like little you could i think you see like little kids walking dead t-shirts it's just very strange i just actually i was in uh the store the other day i was in toys r us and i was actually looking at a. Uh... Some WWE action figures that were right. actually like a zombie version of right. the actual people, and I yeah. was like, "Wow, okay, <laughs> you know, like, like we're getting there." <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you played a zombie in Z Nation. What was it like uh, to get into the makeup? Uh, that was actually super fun. Um, before I got the role, I didn't know that I was going to be playing a zombie. Um, it was the, it was a cameraman. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually got turned. Okay. Um, and so, you know, once I realized that I was going to become a zombie, I was like, wow, I hope that I actually get to be the zombie. And it's not like, Oh, he goes down, he gets bit. And then another guy gets up right. and another guy is him. And, um, no, I really got to, uh, Got to do my thing as a zombie and get taken out and all that. So I'm super, I'm super stoked. Like, uh, that was awesome. Yeah. How um, long was the process to, to get the zombie makeup? Uh, makeup and makeup only took probably about uh, 45 minutes, maybe, maybe close to an hour. Mm-hmm. It, it, it wasn't that bad at all. Yeah. It wasn't that bad at all. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I might have to actually, uh, uh um, I think I actually posted a picture of me and the makeup on the little Twitter account there. Did you guys get there? Said yeah. Mr. Underscore MT29 Taylor. Mm. Oh, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like probably the hardest part was the teeth. I assume the, I assume they're fake teeth. I hope they're not your real teeth. But uh. <laughs> Oh, well, that was actually having a whole bunch of actual, they poured this like uh, corn syrup. Mm-hmm. 
type uh, stuff in your mouth. So yeah, those are those, those are my no, those are my porcelains there. All right, all right. She, <laughs> <laughs> Looks very cool. I like yeah, Z- take I, a bite out of cry. Exactly. I I need to catch up on Z Nature because I actually uh, really liked what I watched, but uh, um, I think I watched the first two seasons. So I need to catch up so I can see you as a zombie. But it's it's fun. I, I like the I like the show. It's a fun show. I actually um, hadn't watched a lot of it before I um, before I got the role, and then I kind of binge watched it and uh, uh, three seasons. Yeah, three seasons worth, and it was funny because my kids were sitting there watching watching it with me, mm-hmm. uh, episode for episode, and were like, "Dad, don't watch that without me." <laughs> so I had to wait for them to come home every day until I could turn it back on. Uh-huh. But um, it's, a, it's it's a quirky zombie show, and yeah. I, uh, it has a uh, uh, it's written and has, it's very witty. I, I, I enjoy the wit that they have and all the little stuff that they throw in. You can tell, uh, you know, what the writers enjoy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, all you- but it's shot. It, I was oh. going to say it's just sh- it's shot in Spokane. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm up here in Seattle and it's it's right here. So that's very true. All your kids uh, into horror? Um. No, nah, right now they're kind of uh, they're kind of more into a little bit of uh, they're going through kung fu theater like I right. did when I was about their age. Uh-huh. Um, it's and that's why them watching the zombie TV show was real interesting because, like I said, I tried to have them watch it a little bit before that, a couple of weeks before that, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, they still haven't really made it uh, made it really far into the movie. I think that uh, first part of the film kind of blew my son's mind. So yeah. Yeah, Pennywise is coming out the drain and took little poor Georgie. Mm-hmm. All my son saw was the teeth and the face and the big eyes, and <laughs> yeah, he's good. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. I mean, uh, even at the time, I used to, uh, I used to play with the uh, the paper boats when it would uh, when it would rain here. So probably when I was a little younger than when it came out, but still, I see the picture now with uh, with Tim Curry in the Mad Magazine on your mm-hmm. Twitter. It's pretty cool. With uh, Don King and Mike Tyson on the cover. Then you got a little, you got Ben, you got Ben right there, Brandon right there, and everybody right there. Yeah. And it's funny because you know most people don't even realize that Seth was even in that film. Um, um, you know, people hear Seth's name and then they think back and they're like, "Oh, that is him." And I don't know if they just completely associate him with Austin Powers or you know other stuff that he's done before. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, before he just kind of jumped behind the scenes and stuff. But yeah, that's a really cool picture, though. I'm sure that's a cool memory. What well, would you say overall? Uh, making the movie was a positive experience. I definitely would say that. Um, and I would tell any youngster out there, man, that you know, whatever you enjoy doing, go out there and do it, and don't worry about what people say. Um, Especially if it's, you know, going out there and doing something that makes you happy. Now, unfortunately, I, being a parent, I got to I gotta be a little, uh, you know, so if you're talking about going out there and doing some stuff you shouldn't be doing, <laughs> right, don't, right. don't be thinking about that. Right, but, right. you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, don't, um, be, yeah. Go on, don't be going with the Las Vegas Raiders out in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said the Las Vegas Raiders, you know, I get a hard time being out here in Seattle. And all I tell people is you just should have gave him the ball. If he gave him the ball, he'd still be here. And your running backs wouldn't be injured in preseason and sitting on the bench every year. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. And, you know, tell Tom Brady he's going to get his bell rung this year because, you know, we we still – we got a bone to pick, man, from, I think it was, what, 2004? Mm. Yeah, we got a bone to pick. I'm still mad. We should have <laughs> went to the Super Bowl that year. So I'm holding a grudge. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty awesome uh, Super Bowl last year. Yeah, it was, good, yeah. It, was, it was a good Super Bowl last year. Uh, mm. I love the machine that is known as the Patriots. Even though I want to see you guys go down, I do respect you guys. Uh-huh. I respect Bill Belichick and what he's been able to do with that program, man. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a lot better so, than when I, when I was a kid and, and the Patriots went to the Super Bowl against the Bears, and it was like the biggest blowout, I think, in the history of the Super Bowl. So was it? <laughs> you're talking about when the quarterback before uh, Tom Brady was there? Uh, yeah, well, no, this was before that. Name? This Not Bledsoe. It would have been, uh, I forget who the 
Cool. This would have been back in the eighties when they, they played against the, 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 the bears, when the bears were, uh, you know, well, when they had the, the bears fridge and everything. 85 bears. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. And it was just See. a t- total blowout. At the, you know, I think it was the worst blowout ever at the time in the history. Of the Super Bowl. <laughs> And I think we've had a few since then. I think Seattle had one recently or uh, last year or a couple of years ago, like 42. Or, yeah. What was that? Oh, yeah, when they whooped on uh, Denver in the Super Bowl, like 42 to like 17 or something. Or, yeah. Uh... <laughs> well, um, mentioned your Twitter page and uh, looking forward. Uh, it's cool that you're going to do the conventions, and I hope you have a good time at those. And I and, uh, hope you, you know you continue doing them. Thank you, thank you. I, like I said, I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope I do get a invite to kind of come out and show up at more. But you know, uh, it, it, it all depends. <laughs> uh-huh. It all depends. You know, uh, I know we have we've had a couple of cons here and stuff like that. You know, my information is out there, so it's just all about the want. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll put you a know. good word in for you. I don't know what that what that'll do, but no, I'm sure it. I'm I'm sure it (laughs) will. But but it's nasty, Neil. I think it'll be all right. You got my back, right? You got me, man. Yeah, just tell him nasty Neil saying it'll be totally fine. (laughs) Just show up at the door. I'm knocking. (laughs) Who is this? Look, this is Marlon Taylor. Nasty Neil sent me. (laughs) He said he said you got a tape for me. Well, it's it's been awesome talking to you. It's been a really good time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and I'd love to talk to you again sometime. Oh, just let me know, man. Just let me know, and you got it. All right. Excellent. You'll be right back. This is Betsy Palmer, and I'm not sorry that I lost my head. It's been worth every moment of 